Hi everyone. Welcome to the conference number 14 of the phase B of this self-knowledge course. In this conference we will talk about tantrism, we will talk today about sex. In this topic we will come to understand why the great battle between white and black magicians has it root in sex. The objective of this conference is to allow us to know the three types of tantrism that exist, the characteristics of each one, and learning how to differentiate them. So let's start by defining what tantrism is. Tantrism means practice of sex. And tantras are all people who have had sex. This means that everyone who has had sex is a tantra, and what distinguishes them is the type of sexuality they practice. The great battle between the black and white magicians has its roots in sex, because it is in sex where all powers can be developed. The bronze serpent that healed the Israelites in the desert, the serpent lifted up in the cane, and the tempting serpent of Eden, fight each other. One is the kundalini serpent lifted up in the spine, and the other one is the inverted fire through fornication. The first is that of white tantrism. The second that of black tantrism. Those who practice white sexual magic never spill semen in life. Those who practice black sexual magic spill the semen. But we must know that there are three types of tantrism, the white, the black and the gray. It is important that we learn to distinguish them. So let's study each one of them. The transcendental fire develops only with white tantrism. In this, there is no orgasm or ejaculation of semen. With this tantrism the kundalini is awakened, that is, the fire of the Holy Spirit. The purpose of this union is the creation of the existential bodies of the being. This practice must always take place between a man and a woman, phallus within the yoni, and does not include fornication. There are three basic requirements for a sexual union to be of white tantrism. It must always be presided over by love, fidelity, and chastity. This practice will be carried out with a stable partner of the opposite sex. It should not be a union made for mere personal convenience, or in which there are continuous feelings of hatred or resentment. Both should be seeking to develop mutual respect and the development of love. In the practice of white tantrism, chastity must always exist. That is, sexual energy will never be lost. The key is the phallus uterus connection without ejaculation of the sacred sperm. The method to practice white tantrism is as follows. Always before doing the practice, we must make sure that the environment of the bedroom in which the practice will be carried out is free of negative energies and entities that may interfere. We will do this by performing the conjuration of the Bailey lean and the magic circle of protection that we learned in conference seven of the phase A. After this, both will request for assistance to the inner father and divine mother of each one for the practice. You will do this with your own words, directing this petition to your heart. Then, both will proceed to light the sexual fire with caresses and kisses, until a perfect lubrication of the female yoni is achieved for penetration. And after this, they will proceed to the connection or penetration of the lingam in the yoni, of the penis in the vagina. When the sexual connection is established, both proceed to transmute the sexual energy through a respiratory process that consists of three stages. First, inhalation. Both will inhale the air through the nose, deeply and slowly, trying to lengthen this inhalation for about 20 seconds. As you inhale, imagine the air entering the lungs and then taking it to the sexual glands. Then you retain the air. Lengthening the retention for 20 seconds, while you imagine and feel that the sexual energy, like a golden thread, ascends from the sexual glands to the coccyx and then ascends through the spine vertebra by vertebra, up to the point between the eyebrows. Once the energy reaches the point between the eyebrows, the air will be exhaled by pronouncing the following sound, slowly and elongated. E then, you repeat the breathing and imaginative process, and when you reach the point of exhaling the second time, you will do it with the sound. Then, you repeat the procedure again, and the third time exhale with the sound.
Repeat this process as many times as necessary to transmute all sexual energy. If at any time the sexual potency drops, that is, the man loses some erection, or the woman loses some lubrication, you will make soft movements, kisses, and caresses to recover the potency, and continue transmuting the energy. The important thing is to withdraw or end the practice without spilling the creative sexual energy, that is, without ejaculating or reaching orgasm. The ascent of the energy up to the point between the eyebrows is made in the first two initiations, or regeneration of the first two solar bodies, physical and vital. This process of energy rising to the point between the eyebrows is known as the base clef. This is because of the baton shape that makes the energy path, similar to the symbol of this key, and because the bodies that vibrate with the lowest musical notes are being regenerated here. In the creation of the following solar bodies, astral, mental and causal, the ascent of the energy goes from the coccyx, reaches the point between the eyebrows, and from there, it descends to the heart. This process is then known as the treble clef. Here the bodies that vibrate with higher musical notes will be created. In the creation of these bodies, energy must be directed to the heart. Since just as the development of an embryo in its mother's uterus begins with the formation of the heart, and then the other organs, in the same way the development of these embryos of higher bodies that we have, will occur. In this case, the same process of inhalation, retention, and exhalation will be followed with the same three sounds. This procedure is repeated as many times as necessary to transmute all the sexual energy. And always withdrawing or ending the practice without spilling the creative sexual energy. It is very important to keep during this practice a good concentration, imagination, and will. It is very important to stay focused during the practice and not allow our mind to distract us with any thought, but keep our consciousness focused on the practice. Imagination is also very important. For the wise to imagine is to see and create. Therefore, we must strive to imagine the energy going up through the spine. And we must have will, which is the metal to overcome desire. Some important recommendations to consider are Not to practice during the menstrual period. Seven days must be respected. Not to practice during pregnancy or lactation. To practice once a night, because the sexual glands work alternately, one per night, and it is necessary to leave a minimum of 20 hours to start working with the other. Each one must concentrate on their own genitals, since each one works with their own energy. After practice, wait at least two hours before showering. It is recommended to have the room in very good hygiene and cleanliness conditions. Do not use contraceptives as they isolate and affect the creative power of sexual energy, and we must consider that this practice is a natural control of fertility, because the success of the practice is never reaching orgasm and ejaculation. The reproductive system and spine must be in good condition. Always remember to only make soft movements, so as not to spill the energy. That is, so that a sexual fall does not occur. And have patience and perseverance to control and eliminate that defect of fornication that leads us to expel energy through orgasm and ejaculation. The ascending fire has the power to awaken the chakras and open the seven churches of the apocalypse of St. John that are found in our spine. It leads us on the path of intimate self-realization. For this, the only thing that really works is white tantrism. Let's now see what Black Tantrism consists of. In Black Tantrism the awakening of the igneous serpent is sought in its strictly negative form. There is a connection between lingam yoni and magical rites and seminal ejaculation. It is evident that the sacred fire in Black Tantrism rushes from the coccyx towards the atomic hells of men. Black Tantras reabsorb semen after it has been spilled miserably. The result is fatal because the semen, after having been spilled, becomes loaded with satanic atoms that, upon penetrating the organism again, acquire the power to awaken the kundalini in a negative way. Then the tail of Satan appears, the abominable kundabuffer organ, the second serpent that opens the seven chakras that are in the lower abdomen, the seven gates of hell, as the Mohammedans say. Black magicians often teach that it is possible to awaken the kundalini by spilling the sexual energy, without a stable partner, 
or with several partners, participating in orgies, doing homosexual practices, practicing oral sex, anal sex, and masturbation. The result is that the spinal fire, instead of going up through the medullar canal, go down towards the atomic infernos of men, and crystallize the tail of the kunda buffer in the astral body. Becoming internally a real demon. The Grey Tantrism is the sexual practice that has as its purpose the animal enjoyment without transcendent longings. This is the sexuality that the vast majority of humanity practices, in which they seek for pleasure to expel their sexual energy, without having any knowledge of the power that is in the sexual practice and in the sexual energy. So they only serve as batteries that are charged daily to fulfill their functions, but as they fornicate their energy all the time, they feed with it the subhuman entities that live within themselves, which is their ego, and the external entities that constantly search to steal people's energy, since they do know the power of sexual energy and use it for their perverse purposes. It is good to know that all grey tantras inevitably become black tantras. Every fornicator, even if he is unaware of black tantrism, is in fact a tantra, and inevitably becomes a dark personality, with the fully developed tempting serpent of Eden. Since with each fornication his seminal envelope blackens, until he reaches a point where he becomes aware of the power of sex, and consciously decide to use it to seek power, prestige, material things, domination on others, etc. Remember that, if we are really aiming for the intimate self-realization of our being, the only thing that really works is white tantrism. We hope that this conference has helped you learn to distinguish the three types of tantrism. We invite you to our next conference, in which we will talk about the organization of creation in the universe. A very interesting topic titled, The Ray of Creation. Thank you very much for attending. Until the next conference.